we have a new engine to look at. EM1. This is a double piston engine. Should be interesting. A little starter adapter. Well packaged as always by this manufacturer. This is the new EM1 mini engine. Comes with an instruction sheet. I suggest that you read this down to about here and ignore the rest of it. It's just confusing. Forget about it. This is a very attractive engine. It's like a work of art. This would look good just sitting on a shelf. It's fairly intricate. This is a twin piston single combustion chamber engine. has one spark plug. The intake valve is on this side of the engine, directly opposite the spark plug. And this line leads to the carburetor that's on top of the fuel tank. The engine is now at top dead center after the compression stroke. You have the two connecting rods, a clevis connection to a rocker, and you probably can't see it, but there's a pin that's connected to what we would know as the connecting rod itself, which then goes inside the piston, and there's a wrist pin up inside here. So you want to get oil on this wrist pin on the piston, here on this connection where the rocker turns, rotates back and forth on the clevis, on the bottom end of the connecting rods, on either side of this crankshaft where the bearings are. On the fan, you want to get some oil on this fan shaft and back here behind the, uh, the fan itself. A little oil on these gears. The big gear has a cam on it, which runs against a roller. This is a rocker that operates the exhaust valve. One little oil here with some oil behind these gears and on the gears. There's a clevis on this side, another clevis down here. And this, this pushes up and down and it works this rocker, which in turn opens the exhaust valve, which is right behind this exhaust pipe. It's actually, the exhaust pipe comes off of the manifold for the exhaust valve. Engine runs clockwise when viewed from this side of the engine. And it comes with an adapter to fit into your cordless drill. This is a four-stroke engine. We're at bottom dead center in this position. We're coming up on compression. We are now at top dead center. That's the power stroke. Right here, the cam is engaging with this rocker. It's opening the exhaust valve. Now we're on the exhaust stroke. Again, we're at top dead center. The exhaust valve has closed. Now we're on the intake stroke and we're getting ready to compress again. That's the four cycles. The timing wheel has the magnet. The magnet passes the Hall effect sensor that triggers the spark. That spark should go off just past top dead center, right about there. I didn't mention is you need to oil these points here on this rocker that opens and closes that exhaust valve. You might be able to see the exhaust valve on the videos right in there. You can see that going up and down there. When you oil this, it's going to throw oil everywhere. 
It's kind of messy. It's the nature of the beast. Oil is your friend. It will make your engine last a long time. I would suggest you oil this before every run or every tank of fuel. I'm using Coleman Lantern fuel with just a hint of Marvel Mystery Oil. It runs perfectly on that one. Three batteries. Again, I'm using a blank for one of the batteries that has worked very successfully on the other engines. This appears to be the same ignition system that's on the hit and miss engines. When you get this engine, you want to check and make sure that these screws are tight. They are just into a nut that's on the hole on the other side of this wood. Mine were loose as could be. And this one in particular, this holds the ground strap for your ignition. So if it's not making a good connection, you may not have good ignition. And make sure you turn this off when you're not running the engine. When I got this engine, the set screws that were on the two flywheels were way too short. And by the time they engaged the flat on this crankshaft, the top of the set screw was about here, which was real close to stripping out. So I replaced those with set screws that are five millimeters long. And the same thing for the set screw that was on the starting adapter. It was too short. And this one's six millimeters long. It sticks out past the top. I just couldn't find one that was shorter. For the timing, where my timing is set on this engine, that set screw is right opposite the corner of this web on the crankshaft. And again, this engine runs clockwise when viewed from this side of the engine. That means that these fans are blowing air away from the cylinder. That's the way it's set up. These can be a little temperamental to start until they warm up a little bit, and it's fairly cold out here in the shop today. The difference in the setting of this needle valve, just a fraction of a degree, can make the difference between it running and not running for very long. You want to hear that exhaust popping, not like that. If it's not popping, then it tends to load up and the spark plug gets wet and it'll quit on you. This is a pretty good speed, just like this. Sometimes you can get it to slow down a little more when it warms up. This is not intended to be a high-speed engine. It runs well, just like this. Sounds like a sewing machine.
when you tilt that around, like what I'm doing, showing different angles, you change the attitude of the carburetor with the fuel level, and that'll change the speed for a while. It's a nice little demonstration model. I have not been able to start this by hand yet, but I have seen it done.